this set is all about using the cutwork function in version 5 and when we use the cutwork function we have to use the veneering needles they're not needles they're little chisels and there are four of them and they are color coded so I've got quite a simple design here it's all I call them lozenges actually they look a wee bit like chubby baseball bats anyway you go to the cut work stump work toolbox and you ask for digitize cut work border and hole number one gives us everything we need to cut a hole to give us a tack down line for our water soluble stabilizer and then our satin outline it also gives us what they call a stabilizing run that's to hold the fabric to try and stop it from fraying don't try using it on a good linen you need something that can be starched until it's as stiff as a board now I'm not going to alter any of these settings I'm going to put my first node in here and because I want my cuts along this edge I'm going to come down a bit deeper and try and go up the middle Now if you've got a machine that's got the ability to turn the thread sensor off, use it. The 9900 has it, the 12,000, 14,000 and the 15,000. I don't know about the 11,000 but what you can do is you stick a piece of plastic in between the tension plates like um, the edge of a credit card it's a good use for a credit card okay here you'll see I've got a whole pile of jumps ignore that right now I've blown this up I'm gonna hide the display those are the chisel cuts and it leaves little gaps between the chisel cuts it's not a fault it's to prevent the fabric being pushed down under your needle plate you'll see there's a little gap there which means you've actually got to snip those with your scissors to get them out there should be another gap yeah, there's a gap here <coughs> and there's a gap here and that will stop this end collapsing down under your needle plate okay let's bring back the display because I want to check what width that satin stitch is because it uses the satin border tool and to do that I open this up there's the satin and I scroll down and it tells me the width is three mils that's not very wide but it is just that touch heavy for me because we're only doing lozenges so I'm going to make it 2.5 it still covers the cut marks and then I'm going to tell that close now we don't travel anywhere you 
you want to do all your cutting before we do the embroidery. So I'm going to pull back a bit and move up to the next one. Pull back a bit more. Okay, digitized cut work border. Put my first node down here. down I haven't quite come down far enough so let's undo that last node There's still a small bit of a curve in there there we go And now we move on to the next one. I'll check on the satin widths in a minute. Oh, I wondered why it was so pixelated. I got it miles too high. And the next one. And the next one. Okay, now we'll come up to these.
time this one. This one. Now, if you don't already have a set of veneer needles, um, but you know me ones are quite expensive, I believe that. $200 in the States. Well, not much cheaper over here. And I discovered after I bought mine that the Faf uses the same needles the same colour coding, the same angles. But of course, there's only one company makes them, and it's an Italian company. And if you've got a multi needle machine, you can actually buy the industrial versions for your multi needle machine direct from Italy for a lot less than I paid for my Janome ones. Okay, now we've got all our holes digitized. So let's look at it in true view. There we go. Now, I need to check on all of these. Come on, give it to me. Don't tell me it's not going to let me have them all together. Nope, I've got to do it one at a time. Okay, I give in. Embroidery. That's a pain in the posterior. Width, 2.5. Enter. Thank you. Two point five. Yep, oh. I've got to use object properties from here. I was hoping that I could sort of short circuit it and do the rest all in one go. Not going to let me. 2.5. 
We used to be able to do that in the old program. Can I tell that enter? Yes. Now my mouse is set up so as my middle button is enter, but the program won't accept it for this. Okay, now if I go to File, Print Preview, I want to show you something. That's two pages. That's Tack Down, Cutters, and this will be the Quick Stabilizer Under and Satin Stitch. So you've got one two, three, four, five, six, six, two pages, thank you, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen times four, Oh, 20, 56 needle changes. Okay. Close. Highlight that one. Hold down shift. Highlight that one. And tell it combine selected. Now all of those have been combined. So now I'm going back to File, Print Preview. One, two, three, four. It'll do the first bit of stitching. Then you have to swap your needle for your chisels, one at a time. The black, the blue, the red and the green. And then when that's all finished, you'll be asked to put the thread back in. And remember to turn your thread sensor back on. You turn it off after you've done the initial stitching. Then you use your needles, your chisels, and then you have to turn it back on for your thread. Okay, so I'm going to tell that close. Right. And now we're going to do a little bit of viewing. And if all these spider's webs annoy you, hold down shift, press C. And they've gone. Make these a bit... bit bigger as so you can see. You have to excuse me yawning. Player. And I'm going to turn the image off. That's the stabilizing run. And that doesn't mean you're putting the stabilizer underneath. What it's doing is it's putting two rows of stitches around your fabric in a, an attempt to stop it from fraying. Right, I want to slow this right down. That's your needle cuts. It's doing all the black needle.
Now when the black needle has finished, you change your needle to the next colour and your machine should tell you which colour. That's the blue. Blue. Now the red. And you'll notice it's cutting over some of the previous cuts. That's the green. Right, I'm just going to pause this for a minute. Okay, on each one of them, there's a gap where no knife runs on the top. It's not a fault, it's deliberate. And then there's a gap at the bottom and it's not always in the same place. This one's on this side. This one is on this side. So as 
this one, this one's on the right as well. This one's on the right, this one's on the left. This one's on the right. Okay, this one is on the right, the left. The right, the left. The left, the left, the left. Hmm, I suppose you would say that's on the right. Yeah, well, wow. no knife marks, no knife marks, no knife marks, no knife marks at the top. And as I said, that's to stop this falling down and getting in the way of the chisels or down under your needle plate. Okay, now that's your placement line for your stabiliser. So once all your needles have cut, just slip a piece of stabiliser on the back. Some people put it on the front. Um, you've got to try and get it as tight as you can. So we're nearly done with the stabiliser, so let's just up this up a bit. So you've got the stabiliser in behind your hoop now, or on the top of your hoop. Mew makes the decision. And that was your underlay for your edging, your cover stitch. That's one. And that's that. I wanted you to see how the knives operated. Okay, so let's tell that stop. Bring back the display. And in the next video, we'll do the embroidery. So I'll see you all in the next video.